Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing, where I've been having some great success using these for place, plastic spoons. But more recently I've been down to the south coast of Devon and some guys down there from Peyton Sea Angling Club have been doing really well. They do use spoons like this metal ones, but they use, well, really big baits, I have to say, whole peel of crab and giant launch. Let's go down there see if we get a few tips and show you a few fish of how they catch place in South Devon. Down on the south coast of Devon, it's absolutely stunning scenery, no question about it. And one of the most famous places that you can fish down there is called the Skerries Sandbanks. They're located just a few miles offshore uh, from the South Devon coastline. Very, very popular place. And if you're driving along that stretch of the coast, it is gobsmackingly beautiful along there. In fact, you could be forgiven for thinking you're driving along the south coast of France or even Spain. If you want to go shore fishing, you can do beach fishing along there and just work your way along the coast traveling east from Salcombe, work your way along that coast where it's a fantastic coastal drive and you come to the most famous port of all on the South Devon coastline other than Plymouth and that is Dartmouth and it's here based in Dartmouth that a lot of fishing boats go out. It's a big sailing centre here as well, a lot of boating activity goes on but for fishing you know you're close to the scary sandbanks, there's a lot of other inshore marks, rocks and reefs and a great town, very, very busy in the summer though, really busy in the summer. But if you go in springtime place fishing, you know, April, May, that's the time to go before the crowds get down there. And get out there, within 30 minutes you could be catching humongous place. Also travel from Dartmouth across to the other side of the river there, across the Dart Estuary to Kingsbridge, which again is a pretty little spot as well. But from there you can get this gorgeous old steam train, chuffing your way all through to Paynton. So there's a nice little trip for the wife, keeps her happy while you guys are out there fishing. The two guys down there that are the specialists in the market with a big place are Mike Johnson and Tim Bird. Both have their own boats down there. Tim specialises in collecting the bait and storing it. Let's hear what he has to say. Okay, right. Well, I've got the freezer here, which is, we keep a load of bait and just uh, frozen stuff. We've got a few sardines there, some clams. We've got uh, any peelers that we have that are on the last legs, we freeze down and use as a, as a sort of a backup. We've got uh, a few frozen prawns, some more crabs, razor fish, a few mackerel and a few eels. What we do is normally just freeze a couple of eels down at a time. We take those along with us just to get us going in case we uh, struggle to get a bit of fresh bait out there. Um, mainly a lot of the stuff we use is just to uh, actually when we do go fishing is to get enough just to give us something to start off with and then we can feather up fresh lance or whatever as uh, as the time of year uh, predicts really. Right that's the, uh, the frozen bait sorted out. Uh, but I'll keep the best bait out the side, the live baits out the back. Right in here we've got, uh, got a tank now. You can really see there's a few eels in there, a few sand eels in there. But normally we, we uh, in the summer we keep prawns in there and uh, a few sand eels just in case we go and do a bit of bass in or something. Uh, and in the fridge here we uh, keep the peeler crab which we get ourselves from the river. And all that peeler crab from got our own pots down on the river dart where we uh, we go and harvest them on the big tides. 
but they're all lucky thing about these is when they are coming up to peel in they can't pinch you well not too badly anyway when we get the peelers you get them they're all peelers when they peel off the legs you see the uh, the secondary skin coming through there it's all really soft at the moment and when they shed their skin find another one here this one's all ready to go see it's actually popping its shell now and they actually come out of that and they're really soft what we refer to as softies but they're uh, they're an ideal bait and they uh, they come in the different stages and we sometimes there's not one's just cracking there it's just ready to go so hopefully we'll have plenty of bait tomorrow but we tend to use you know the larger crabs because of, uh, we tend to use big baits so that we uh, aim for the bigger fish um, again they're all just coming on to uh, be an ideal bait so we should have plenty tomorrow right and then in this the tank we just use to keep uh, load baits in ideally uh, at the present moment I've got some uh, sand eels in there but normally we use uh, this time of the year or just coming up we normally start getting a load of prawns use the prawns then for a variation of fish we also I've got a, quite a few sand, in, sand eels in here which we have from uh, Sort of October last year, we seem to live quite well in the gravel. It's set up probably about two inches of gravel in the bottom. It's got a, a circulation pump there which pumps it through a filter which I've made up of uh, shingle and uh, crushed shells and uh, like a filter matting in there. And then I've also got an aerator pump which keeps uh, the, oxygen, the oxygen in the water. Right, the filter basically is a homemade system. Just got some, uh, you know, the water's being pumped up from the, the pump there. And just filtered through this uh, this fine sort of matting which I got from the uh, pet shop. And then you've got some coarse like coral, small stones, and underneath you've got shells. Which apparently helps to break up and they break up and they keep the calcium levels up. And then that's basically as simple as that. And then the, uh, the water's filtered through this material and just got to wash it out every now and again to make it nice and clean. Okay, so you've seen all the bait now, so now we'll get on to the fishing gear. I like to use a 12 pound class Kenzaki uh, fishing rod with a saltish um, fishing reel to attach to it. On that we use 15 pound braid and for the rubber or shock leader we use up to 30 pound, 30 pound for that. On there we use the sliding swivel, link swivel, three beads and then you've got your main swivel which will attach to your trace. Uh, we like to use these rods uh, for place fishing because we're only using two ounces of lead uh, and from that we'll have a, 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 a rig of around 10 to 12 feet attached to it. And a very good tip for you if you're going out place fishing on the scary banks. If you're actually um, holding your rod at the time, always fish it in free spool and if you get the bite that we've been waiting for all day, please let as much line out as possible. Let it go 20, 30, 40 yards when the boat's drifting until you actually strike on your fish. Uh, we use a panel rig and the one on the top is a size one and we use that to wrap around the line and to put it tight on the bait and on the bottom is a size 4.0 crab hook and there's a very short length of line to the swivel and this is because we actually let the place swallow the hook and so instead of hurling the fish we can actually cut that off and redo it instead of having all your beads floating around onto your link swivel and then you're set up for the place fishing for the day
got the first place coming in there, mate. And look, like a bad fish. Keep me got the net there, mate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good fish. Nice one. Two and a half. And that's, uh, as you can see, we'll take the bait right down. And this is a little tip. You can cut your trace and you haven't lost all your beads. And you've just got to retie, just put a little bit of trace on, and away we go. There you go, nice scary bank's place. Hopefully, the first of many. Well, I'm not going to pretend I even saw the bite on this. I was taking pictures of the other guys that are catching that many plays. I really haven't had a chance to fish properly. They won't let me near the back of the boat at all. But I've got a place here, I believe. If I have, I'm going to look pretty stupid. No, it's hanging deep. I'll be a place. Going straight down. Go around the prop. Straight down. It's a baby one. Oh, well, it's still a but fish. It doesn't matter, still fish. Look. You seal the, the beads up here, and what Mike was saying about is it rather than cutting the hook there, letting it slide off, and you lose all your beads. When you cut it off, you just cut there, and you still lose all your beads. <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong rig there, but don't worry, there is a rig they use that you don't lose all your beads. But you see the size of the bait they take, and that's only a small fish. I'll leave the others catch a big fish. We'll put this one back. What about this, folks? Even in between filming, I got to catch fish. There's so many out here on the skerries, and we didn't have to fake it because they're both still alive. 
as you can see, two great big clonking brakes. Really nice fish. I didn't even see the bites because I was messing about filming the other guys catching place. But what they've done is they've come out off the edge of the bank, they've actually come away from it and gone into deep water, which is one of their spots for bigger fish. They get a bigger fish. Don't forget we're targeting bigger fish today, not lots of little ones. And you can see great big place like this, absolutely spanking. I've certainly never caught two places this size at once. A double shot of place like this. Brilliant fishing and in the deep water I certainly don't want to go back in the shallows anymore. So we're going to see if we get a few more. Well I mean we must have had more than a dozen now of big place and still going strong. The wind's dropping so it's all looking pretty good.